All right, we're back for another painting tutorial, and today we're painting one of the new rangers out of the Eldritch Omens box. And I started by zenithaling him, uh, so I sprayed him with a uh, Chaos Black primer from Games Workshop, and then sprayed it about a 45 degree angle, about like this, from all around, with Wraithbone. I know this looks like Gracier, or perhaps even Ceramite White, or whatever the white is called, um, on the camera, but I promise you, it is Wraithbone. So, first color we're going to do, fittingly, is going to be Ian and Yellow. We are going to use this for his armor, and, you know, technically, bright yellow armor probably isn't the greatest idea for someone trying to be stealthy, but... I want these guys to look more cool than they look stealthy, so we're just going to stick with the armor color. Um, and so, down here, where our Zenithal didn't hit as much, we're putting yellow over black, so we're not going to get a lot of color change there. But, that's okay. When the, the whole miniature is done, it will, uh, hopefully, make a cohesive, have a cohesive appearance. And so the fact that we kind of just barely colored that part won't really uh, won't look that bad. We'll see. I guess we'll find out. But otherwise, I'm just doing the rest of the armor here. Um, not the helmet. The helmet is going to be blue, but I am going to do the face mask of the helmet in yellow. I've seen some Eldar painted in the past with uh, their face mask being a different color, so that's what I'm going to do. Just being careful of the other bits here. Um, we are going to use contrast paint on a good chunk of this miniature. So, this is a pretty light color, so I'm not super concerned about if I hit, like, the belts or something. We'll paint over that with a dark brown, so we'll cover this yellow just fine. Like I said, I'm going to get the piece mask in here. And we're going to paint the helmet with a layer paint, actually, so not super concerned with that either. Get in here. There's not a lot of armor showing on these guys. They have a lot of uh, leather or fabric or whatever. So, but just making sure that I get all the parts that are showing. I think that's it. Um, I guess then we have to decide on the gun. Uh, I'm gonna paint the gun yellow for now because I don't know if I'm gonna end up having it be yellow, but if I don't have it be yellow, it's going to be a much darker color anyway. Possibly even black or silver. So painting it yellow now is going to take me maybe 30 seconds, and won't be detrimental in any way if I decide to not have it yellow later. We might keep like the, the area here yellow, and then do the rest, <clears throat> excuse me, do the rest in black or silver, or who knows, we'll have to see. But, I'm going to finish this yellow up, make sure I didn't miss any other parts of the armor, let it all dry, and then I will come back and we'll do the next step. Alright, our yellow is mostly dry now, we're going to move on to doing the belts and stuff, and for that we're going to use Gore Grunt of Fur. Uh, we're going to do the belts, the holster on his back, the holster on his hip, his gloves, and his... I can't remember what these are called. Those things on his legs. And we'll start with those things on his legs. So this is basically going to be our, our leather color that we do. And still not 100% sure what color we're going to do the cape, or what camo pattern we're going to paint on the cape. So, I'm just going to try to avoid it for now, and we'll figure it out as we go. The box art for these guys has like a sort of diamond pattern on it. I'm not sure if that's what we'll do, but we'll see. I might end up doing like a black and white sort of urban camo on them. 
I think it would look good with the yellow and blue. Again, it would make very little sense for them to have camo cloaks and then bright yellow armor. But, looking cool is as far as I'm concerned with this paint job, so. Right, there's that. And then I'm gonna get his gloves. This thing in his hand is gonna be metal. So I'm just gonna not even worry about getting this color on it. I am being very careful around what we've already painted yellow though, because this would uh, obviously show up on the yellow quite significantly. So I'm just gonna keep going around the model here, getting all the the leather bits picked out, and then once I do that, I will let it all dry, and we'll come back and maybe do the blue. All right, we're back with our brown all nice and dry. And now, as promised, we're gonna move on to the blue. So we're gonna start with techless blue for this. Not a contrast paint, I know, I know, shocking. But we're gonna do it just this once. And uh, this is not gonna be the darkest of blues, obviously, right out of the pot. But we're gonna put some Gullum and Glaze over the top of it and make it a little bit darker. Still not going to be necessarily as dark as a Eandon box art is, but going to be dark enough for our purposes. Um, and I'm just going to talk about a little bit about Gullum and Glaze. Um, let me grab it here. So this is Gullum and Glaze. It's out of production. Uh, they stopped making the glazes a couple years ago. And so if you're trying to replicate this, you're like, what the heck, dude? I can't get a hold of that paint. How am I supposed to paint this color? So, what I will say is, you can make Gullum and Glaze almost exactly uh, by mixing one parts uh, Talisar Blue and four parts Aethermatic Blue. Uh, I tried it on some other models I was painting. It comes out to be almost exactly the same. Uh, the only reason I'm using Gullum and Glaze is because it's in one pot, so I don't have to mix, and I still have it from back in the day. But, if you're a newer painter, and you maybe you weren't even painting when they made Gullum and Glaze, or you're a veteran painter, but you, know, you don't have a paint that they discontinued five years ago, never fear. Mix up some, some contrast colors. Like I said, four to one. Uh, four Aethermatic Blue, one Talisar Blue, and you'll get the uh, the same color. So there's the there's the uh, Techless Blue on the helmet. We're gonna let that dry completely. We'll come back and we'll put the glaze on. All right, we're back with our blue all nice and dry. And now, like I said, we're gonna go onto the glaze. Um, and if you, for some reason, picked up the video right here and you didn't hear the spiel I just gave. I'm using Golem and Glaze. It's out of production. If you don't have it, can't get a hold of it, one part Talisar Blue, four parts Aethermatic Blue, mix them together. There you go. Golem and Glaze. All right. So we're just going to put this straight over the top of the helmet here. Putting it on pretty thick, about as thick as you put on a, a contrast paint. It's, uh, it's much less pigment heavy than a contrast paint, but... Uh, going on like this is still the correct way to approach it. Um, and the reason why you can mix those contrast paints to get basically the same color is because of how uh, not pigment heavy Aethermatic Blue is. Aethermatic Blue is quite thin, and so combined with the very pigment heavy Talisar Blue, you get a nice mix. So I'm just moving it around here, making sure I get the spots of dark and light where I want them and there we go so we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and in the meantime I will decide what we're gonna do for this camo cloak all right we're back and our glaze is nice and dry so now we're gonna go onto the cape and we're gonna do Creed camo um, I still don't know exactly what I want to do with the cape in terms of camo pattern but I know I want it to be green, 
So we're just going to lay this green down, and then we'll worry about camo pattern afterward. Just putting this down. I don't want it to start pooling anywhere. I just want a nice flat green color. So just being careful. Maybe not putting it on as thick as I might on a surface with more texture. So I just want to color the surface here. Preferably on camera. Just trying to get all the, or as many as possible of the uh, the weird like splotches and stuff out of this color and it will settle as it uh, dries and get a couple more out of it but try to do as much as I can while we're putting it on and that just means wide sweeping strokes to not uh, not leave too much texture in it got a little piece of fuzz or something in the paint Grab that out with some tweezers. There we go. Make sure to get all the all the folds of the cape and up in here. I'd actually made a mistake earlier. I had thought that was somehow part of the glove, so I painted that bit brown. Uh, I just painted over it with a little bit of wraith bone, and, or I didn't actually use wraith bone. I used some cream color. It's the closest thing I had on hand. Um, but I just painted over it and then put the green over it, and now you can't really tell. Just being careful. This green, while it looks pretty light, it will still show up on... Obviously, will show up on our yellow, but even will show up on our brown as well. We don't want that. Just noticing there that didn't finish painting all of the holster, so I'll touch that up while we let our green dry. But yeah, I'm just gonna go through and make sure that I get all the spots of this cloak, do any touch-ups that need to be done, and then once that's all dry, I will come back and we'll do the next step. Alright, we're back and everything is nice and dry. We're gonna move on to the camo pattern on this cape now. And we're just gonna go for it. Not a, not sure if this is gonna work, but we'll see. So I've got Snakebite Leather, Saigo Brown, and Dark Angel's Green here. We're just gonna pop these open, and do some splotches, and see what we get. So we're gonna start with Snakebite Leather. And I'm just gonna take this, and I'm just gonna do some some rough splotches like that, I guess, and we'll see what we end up with at the end. Um, so, unfortunately, because I'm going to use this contrast paint, I'm going to have to use the hair dryer to dry these at anything close to reasonably quickly. So I will be stopping the camera between colors, but we're going to do these colors pretty much back to back here. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do the inside of the cape camo. I think I don't. I think I'm just going to do the outside. And I'm just trying to not overdo the splotches here. I don't want to do so much of one and then not have any room for the other. So that'll do for that. So like I said, I'm going to Dry this real quick, then we'll come back and do the next one. Alright, we're back. And continuing on with the camo with Sigor Brown. I need to shake my Sigor Brown some more, apparently. That's better. Alright, Sigor Brown, here we go. Again, just gonna do some random splotches. Try to overlap some of our other brown in a couple places. Uh, doing things like this can be difficult because you want to try to make them random, but trying to be purposely random can be a challenge sometimes. Can end up uh, 
can end up making patterns that you don't want. So we're just going to do our best and see what happens. One up here. And one on the shoulder here. All right. And I think because these colors are so dark, I don't think I even need to go and dry these. I'm just going to go straight into the Dark Angel's green. Give it a good shake. And then... So I got some pooling on my original color, so I'm just going to turn that into a Dark Angel green splotch. Just like that. Just do a green splotch there. And then that might be good. Maybe right here. And then maybe under here, just in case. I think, though, that will just about do it for that cape. I'm going to let this all dry. And then we will come back and either do some more on the cape or continue on to details on the gun and stuff. Alright, we're back. And we are going to do one more step on the cape. Um, and as blasphemous as it is to be painting any end and guy, we're going to put some Beal Tan Green on this. This is just going to be to tie all these splotches that we have together. And I think it'll, I think it'll look good. I'm just going to do it over here to see if it might be a little too much. Maybe thin it down a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's fine. We might come back and do another coat of something on it later, but for now, we're just going to do this Beal Tan Green on it. And then we will continue with the rest of the model and maybe revisit the cloak later. We'll have to see. But for now, I'm just going to put this all over the camo cloak here let it dry, and we'll come back and work on some details. Alright, we're back, and our camo cloak is nice and dry. And I think that uh, Beal Tan Green was quite helpful in uh, kind of bringing it all together. We might come back to it, but who knows. For now, though, I'm going to go on to Gorthor Brown, and I'm going to do all the highlights of the leather with this. So I'm going to get a thinner brush, and I'll just start back here, and all this stuff, all these runes on here, and the edge work, and all this stuff, I'm just going to be going for a run. Just going slowly, making sure not to get any on the main body of this leather. And we're going to come back and paint all the gems and stuff, but for now, I'm not going to worry about getting any paint on it. So I'm just going to go around all the leather on here and do this. So here on the, on the gloves, these knuckle things, I'm just going to do them in Gorthal Brown. I'll do a little bit of an edge highlight on the back of the gloves here. Just like that. Of course, on the front here. Just do a little edge highlight on these pouches. There we go. On the edge of this. And pretty much just everywhere that you see an edge on the leather. That's where I'm putting this Gortho Brown in. So I'll go through and finish all this up. Probably take me a little while because there's a lot of it. But uh, once I do that, we will come back and start working on the metallic stuff. 
All right, we're back, and our Gorthor Brown is all done. And now we're going to move on to the gun here. Um, and I'm not going to keep it yellow. I am, in fact, going to paint it black. Uh, and I'm going to do that with Noir Black from Reaper. Uh, if you want to stick to Citadel, the equivalent to this is Corvus Black. Uh, Noir Black is slightly more gray. But if you really want it to be exact, you could mix a tiny bit of Skaven Blight Dinge in with, uh, in with Corvus Black. But honestly, if I had a pot of Corvus Black right now, I'd probably just be using that. But uh, because I have Noir Black sitting right here, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm just going to paint this all this color and we're gonna go over this with black templar contrast paint uh, but I just black templar contrast paint or any contrast paint because it kind of pulls back from the edges if I just leave this yellow we'll get sort of black with a yellow edge which might be cool sometimes but not really what I'm going for right now so I'm just gonna fill this in and I'm gonna also gonna paint this cable I think there's either this cable, yeah, that cable continues. I was going to say either that one continues or there's another one somewhere. But uh, yeah, this one just continues around. So just being careful to avoid the fingered gloves that are in here. There we go. And then this cable here. And then I'm just going to take a second to explore the rest of the model and see if there's anything else that we need to black out with this color. Uh, just make sure I got all sides of this cable here. Looks like I did. Oh, this, uh, this right here. I'm going to do this in the same, uh, same finish as the, the gun. There's another mistake in there. I didn't finish uh, painting the glove. I'll correct that with some Gorgrunt of Fur between clips here. Alright, and I think that should be everything. Yeah, he's got a he's got an empty holster on his hip there, so I don't need to do the gun handle. I must have, uh, when I was building this guy, I must have put the wrong holster on, because no gun there. Or he lost his gun somewhere. Who knows? In any event, I'm going to make sure this black has a nice smooth coat on here. And then let that all dry. And then we will come back and do the next step. Alright, we're back. And now we're going to go on to the silver. And we're going to start that with Stormhost Silver. And we're just going to paint this onto all the little gems or soul stones or whatever they're called for the Eldar. I'm just going to paint them onto all of them. He's got quite a few. Um, they're pretty much all over everything that the Eldar use. Just going to get this one that's under. His fingers here. And then it's just about going around the miniature and finding them all. Got a lot on the holsters back here. Just being very careful because we don't want to get this on the parts we've already painted brown. Slowly and carefully. Right, and then there's just a bunch on his gun. I 
And some of these are going to get colored, and some of them are going to stay silver. We'll just have to see as we uh, as we continue with the paint job. I think the soul stones or gems, whatever they are, I'm just going to call them gems, um, are going to be red. And then, like I said, some will just be left as a silver. Alright, so I think it's just this last one here. And that is all of them. So now, I'm just going to go straight into the next color here. I'm going to use Scale 75 Black Metal. Uh, if you want the Citadel equivalent, it is Iron Warriors. I'm using black metal, just because uh, b uh, before when I was using black metal, um, the Iron Warriors was out of stock. It's now come back in stock, but I figured I'd use up the rest of this bottle before getting, or before opening the bottle of the uh, Iron Warriors that I bought. But they are almost identical in color. I'm sure, as I say every time, I'm sure the real artists, the real artists among us, will be able to tell the difference, but for me, they're close enough. And for the style of painting I do, they're exactly the same. So I'm just painting in basically the other metal details on him that I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to be Stormhost Silver, because Stormhost Silver is basically like our decorative silver color. Um, this black metal is our uh, functional silver color. Just going to do the eye lenses here. And let's see what else. Oh yeah, he's got buckles down here on his leather coverings. Down here as well. This down here is probably a gem, but I'm just going to paint it this color. Can't stop me. He's got a clasp back here on his uh, camo cloak. And then I was thinking I might paint these in silver, but I think I'm actually just going to leave them uh, blue. I think I like them being blue. I'm going to paint in these little connection points, though, with this silver. And this bit down here. And this bit right here. Alrighty, and I think that'll do it for this silver. So I'm going to let that dry completely, and then we're going to come back and we're going to color some of these gems. Alright, we're back, and we're going to now go for some Blood Angels Red. And we're just going to put this over the gems that we want to color. So I'm going to start with the one on his waist here. Go over the silver, just like that. And then let's see which other ones we want to do. These on his shoulders here. A little too much paint on the brush, we just want to be careful that we don't get it on the yellow. There we go. And then these four on his holsters back here. I'm losing the tip of my brush here. That's better. Oh, there's an errant hair. That'll do it. All right. There we go. Just 
making sure that we get a solid red color on these. But the silver, the shininess of the silver will still shine through. Give us that nice look. And we're going to do the ones here on his scope. I think actually just the ones back here, not the ones up front. And then the ones on his on the barrel of the rifle up here. there and then side of his head here and I'll do this one in right as well there we go and I think the rest we will leave in silver yeah all right so now our first one should be dry enough by now that we can just move straight into our next steps and so we're gonna use Fire Dragon Bright, as well as some Ulthwan Gray. We're going to start with Fire Dragon Bright. And with our small brush, we're just going to look at the bottom of the gem. Uh, the bottom left in this case. Just get a tiny bit of paint here. Bottom left of the gem. We're just going to do a little kind of U shape or. C shape or whatever. Just like that on the bottom of the gym. Then we're going to take our Ulthwan Gray. In this instance, standing in for pure white. Grab a tiny little dot of that. And wherever you decided to put the swoop of orange, just go to the opposite side. So we did bottom left for here. So we'll go to the top right. And just put in a little dot. There you go. And that's our gem covered. So I'm just going to do that for the rest of the gems that I painted red. We'll come back, add a couple washes, do his eye lenses, and he'll be just about done. All right, we're back. And our lenses are all done. You can see there. Now we're going to do the eye lenses, and for that we're going to use Baharoth Blue. And this is going to be for the eye lenses on his head, as well as the lens of the binoculars he's using. And actually it will be the lenses for the scope as well. Just going to get in there very carefully. Put that in there. And then we're going to add some wash in there later, but for now that's fine. And then I've got a new, uh, a new thing to use in this video that I haven't used in a video before. We're going to use it on this uh, on this binocular here. So we'll do that as soon as that dries. I'm just going to grab the lens of the scope here. If I can, uh, there is no other one. Well, that's weird. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but hey, maybe it goes directly into his <laughs> into his eyes, into his helmet, and shows him what the scope sees. I have no idea. That's weird. Just noticed that. But in any event, I'm going to let that dry. And then we'll come back, do the detail on the binocular, add the washes we need to add, and call him done. All right, we're back, and everything is nice and dry. We're going to start with some washes here. I'm going to start with Agrax Earthshade. And this is just going to go on some of the pouches and stuff here, just to give it a little more definition. Making sure not to get on the yellow, but giving us a little bit of a defining line there between the yellow and the brown. 
trying not to get it on the silver of the little gems we did earlier. Just going down here. Again, just to give us a little bit more definition on this, uh, on the leather parts here. His hands. Just going to darken the shadows on this contrast paint and give us a little bit more depth to everything. Not a required step by any means, but one that I've been doing more and more lately uh, on top of brown contrast paint is just putting this, putting a layer of brown wash over the top of it seems to really, really help. Just make sure to get all of that. Get the back of that, the back of there, and his other fingers here. All right, so then we're gonna take some null oil here, and we're gonna put it all over the gun, yes, but we're also going to put it on his face mask here. It's gonna darken the yellow a little bit, but it's also gonna give us some definition in the eyes, and basically give us some detail in the eyes without us having to worry about painting the eyes super precisely which is something I always like to avoid. And then, we're just gonna put it on the gun here. Uh, this can be over everything, not a big deal. Just make sure to get it on all the bits so you don't get finishes that don't line up. And then I'm gonna put it on the couple parts of silver that are on the rest of his body. So I'm gonna let this dry completely then we will come back and do the last tiny couple details, and he'll be all set and ready to be based. All right, we're back, and we're gonna do a couple last things here. First, we're gonna use some Eshing Gray and do just a couple tiny little edge highlights on the black stuff here. So first on the binoculars, or the monocular maybe. He's looking through two holes, but out of one, who knows. And then just on a couple of the edges on the gun here, edge of the scope, edge of the barrel, and maybe that'll be it. Just edge of the scope, edge of the barrel. Or edge of the muzzle, I guess. There. And there. Alright, so then, the last thing we're gonna do is with the new, uh, with the new material, and that's going to be with one of these. This is a, a brush pen. It's got a, a very fine tip. Uh, the If you want to get some of these, the link will be in the description. It's not a affiliate link or anything like that. I make no money from it. Just if you want to get it, that's where you can go to get it. Or local craft store, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, AC Moore, if they still exist. Any of those kind of places, I'm sure we'll have it. So then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come into this. I'm just going to draw a little crosshair. Um, you could use a brush for this. I just find that I have a steadier hand when using something that feels like a pencil. And I can more easily draw it. So come in like this. And come across like that. And then I'll just do maybe a hash like that and a hash like that. I think that works for me. It's such a tiny detail that you can't even see when the miniature is sitting on the table anyway. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just found uh, these and I've been using them to line my Dark Eldar vehicles. And I figured, yeah, we could we can maybe throw that into a video. I'm sure we can find something to do with it. Uh, but yeah, now you should be seeing him with a base, probably a basic one, because I don't know how I want to base this army yet, but at least something. Um, and that'll be him all done. I will hopefully have a couple more videos for the new Eldar stuff coming out. Uh, probably pretty soon, hopefully. Cross your fingers. 
But yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Hope you learned a thing or two, or at least maybe learned a thing or two not to do. If nothing else, uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see the more things that are coming up in the future. And that'll do it. Thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.